Hi, Layla. Thank you so much for sitting down to talk to us. With pleasure. <laughs> I guess I would like to start at the beginning um, talking about how you got into the art world. Uh, I know you grew up in Iran and came to the U.S. for university, is that right? That's correct. I went to Brown University and I was supposed to be an economics major, but then I took a course on Impressionism and I totally switched to art history and fine arts. And, uh, and then I was supposed to go back and become a curator in the new uh, Museum of Contemporary Art in uh, Iran. Well, the revolution happened in 1979, my last year uh, of graduate school. And thus, I basically lost my passport and everything and uh, separated from my parents who were in Europe. And then I uh, was sponsored by the securities groups, uh, an investment bank at the time, and became their in-house curator. Uh, they uh, sponsored me and I then became an American citizen and uh, opened my own gallery in 1982. My first uh, space was on 82nd and Madison. Um, and then I moved to 72nd and Madison, then 78th and Madison, and then Chelsea. This is a very basic question, but I'm always curious. Are there quite distinct uh, groups of collectors who will go to one or the other neighborhood? Very much so. I feel that museum curators and uh, press tend to come to Chelsea more because they go and within like six blocks, seven blocks, they get to see everything uh, in one day. Uh, so a lot of our museum uh, purchases and the press we get uh, originates from Chelsea. It is so easy for collectors who live in the Upper East Side or whose offices are in the 60s or 57th Street, uh, you know, to stop by to look at a work of art. So three quarters of my collectors from uptown who wouldn't venture downtown. They had to pick up kids at school or they had events all day. It was difficult. Whereas like when I was on 78th Street in Madison or 72nd in Madison, they would just pop in. And it's a while back now, but do you remember the the kind of progression in thinking that led you from the idea of a career in museums to a career as, you know, an independent dealer? Um, yes, I actually um, really wanted uh, to stay with museums, but I also had to support myself. And I started dating a Frenchman, um, who, Michel Soskin, who has a gallery now in, um, in uh, Madrid and he was the nephew of Claude Bernard. So I went on a lot of studio visits with him and I, through him, I fell in love with visiting artists and um, so I really started enjoying working with artists. It sounds like, uh, again, back in the 80s uh, with that um, Deitch show, uh, that was maybe around the beginning of your moving the Middle Eastern artists who had been submitting work to you to the front of the house, as it were? Exactly, but I still worked with my other artists as well. Right. But yes, because they started approaching me and they all were sort of like, uh, you know, it was a, those days there was no internet. There was no uh, auction houses in the region. Um, basically, uh, only the artists who had moved to um, the West got their works maybe even considered. But you should remember the time was a difficult time for Iranian artists, it was very difficult. It was during the hostage crisis. Who would want to buy an Iranian artist? Uh, so it was very difficult, but I did it because of the passion I had and they were great artists and that were in museum shows before, but suddenly no, nobody was paying attention to them. So I did those uh, shows, with, uh, but had to support the gallery through my American, European artists, Latin American artists. In spite of that, of course, I guess you've come, you've come to be known largely, it's, I guess it's a, it's a very particular thing for you. It's a small it's, niche for us, yeah. but, uh, and I think the reason is because uh, Carol Kino did that amazing article, two pages in the New York Times and International Herald Tribune. Mm -hmm. So then everyone started to approaching me from uh, the Middle East and the region. Uh, so in a way, I became known as such, even though 
in reality, I was still very much, if, if one counted my shows, I, uh, I had more international shows than mid regional shows. How do you yeah. feel? How do you feel about that kind of that reputation it's that isn't a, quite right? It's a, it's a blessing, and it's also not such a blessing, you know, because at the end of the day, my clients in New York are American, and they all started thinking I only deal in Middle Eastern oh. art, or the ones who didn't know me. They, they would come to us and they would say, "Oh, well, I'm looking for a Warhol or Basquiat or a, you know." Um, early Stingo or early Pistoletto, and we would say, we have it, right. and they would be surprised. Is there something you can, some way you can sum up uh, what it is that you would like visitors to your gallery to walk away with? I always was a little turned off when I would walk into galleries in New York and was given the cold shoulder, and I was intimidated. I was young, I, my budget was small, and so when I opened my gallery, one of my requirements is that everyone welcomes anyone who walks in. Everyone at my gallery is very friendly, approachable, and we have been told how much they love coming to buy from us because we're so nice and friendly. And that's the way I want to be known. This has been great. Thank you so much for sitting down with us. Thank you for giving me the time and the interview.